Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Today I thought it would be fun to make a small art journal. And it's made out of stuff that probably 99.9% .9 of people already have in their homes or could be easily substituted. So the first thing that I've got will be some kind of mixed media paper. This is not as thick as like watercolor, but it's fairly thick, probably like cardstock, I would say. And I think this is Canson mixed media paper. It doesn't matter what size you want your pages. I decided that I wanted my pages to be about four by four when the book was done, but it doesn't matter. It could be any size you want. And then, of course, if I want it to be four by four, then it needs to be twice that long because when you fold it, then it can become four by four, right? Let's see, I have 20 pieces that are four by eight. Then I cut two pieces of wrapping or gift paper. This is from one of the Pepin Press, it's the Van Gogh uh, gift papers. And it's got lots of really cool stuff in here. And these are the same size as these sheets. Then I also need some kind of a cover. This is just from the back of a notebook, just some thin chipboard. And I got a piece that I believe will be big enough to cut into a front and a back. Also two pieces of that gift wrap to cover those pieces of chipboard in. And then this is a little piece of book cloth that I'm gonna use for the spine. And I just guesstimated, this is a scrap I had left over. It happens to be five by two. So I hope that's big enough. If not, I'll be scrounging around for something that is big enough. Also, you'll need some thread and a needle to sew your papers together. Sound good? So basically it's a bunch of paper and some chipboard and some glue and thread and needle. So I'm just taking my pieces and I've decided that I'm gonna put two pieces together. So I'm gonna fold one increase that fold really really well and then the next one I will fold but I'll just make sure it bends but it's not creased down sharp and then this one goes inside of this one and then when they go together then it can be snugged down I will trim the edge of of these two papers that are together because now they're not exactly perfectly even but it doesn't matter. It's just for aesthetics, but it's not necessary. So that one gets creased real sharp. And then this one just gets a nice bend. This one goes in here. And now I will put these in the trimmer and just barely knock off the edge, just barely. And because I had 20 pieces of the, that paper folded together, that becomes 10 folded signatures. Then for this paper, I'm just going to fold it right sides together, but just barely. clamp those together and I'm going to mark where the holes are going to be this one will do I have a little bit of thread left on this we're just going to use that because it's there and to make sure that I leave the top as the top I'm going to mark a secondary line so that I know that there's two lines for the top and then there's just one line at the bottom. And that way I can keep everything situated. Take another needle, poke the holes where I marked them.
And all the holes have been poked where I marked them. I'll just take my thread on the bottom. Take the next one. grab a clip to hold that so that I can tie the little tail I left and the thread that came out of that second signature, tie those together and grab another signature go in the bottom hole that I punched and then go out through the top set. Make sure it's snug and that the thread isn't loose in there. I'm going to run the needle underneath the stitch that went from the top holes in the first signature when I went into the second signature. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a loop and run my needle back through that and I think I have enough thread just enough to tack on the next signature tie that together I will do. I'll take the next signature and go ahead and feed the needle through and leave a little bit of a tail. Bring it out through the top like so and line it up with the others. And I'm going to tie this little tail that I left to one of the other tails that's down here. Now that that is secure I will take my needle and I will run it between that stitch from the last two signatures and before the loop closes I'll run my needle through and pull that now we can add the next one I'm going to run this underneath the stitches that connect down here do the same thing that I did at the other side When sewing thicker paper together, one thing that can happen pretty easily is that you don't get your stitching tight enough. The thicker paper sometimes, it's deceiving. It feels like the stitches are tight, but they're not. So it's just very important to make sure that you double and triple check and make sure that that stitching is snug. I only have two more. Let's see if I've got enough thread. Knowing me, probably not. Probably run out right before I exit the last signature. Oh, maybe I will have enough. There's the last one. under those stitches and pull that through and then I will tie these together just to make sure everything's secure there we go 
take a couple of clamps and hold those together. And I'll just paint some PVA on the spine. I'm going to set this aside so it can dry for a minute. And while that's happening, I'm going to take my piece of chipboard. Is it the right height? Yeah. <laughs> so it is a millimeter taller, I think, than the paper. But that's fine because I don't care if the cover is just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit bigger. And as far as the width from the spine to the fore edge, I want it just shorter than this paper is. So after everything is folded and said and done, what do we say this was? So it's like 100 millimeters. So if that's 100 millimeters, then I want, I'll say 90, about 97. We'll take off about three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. And of course we need two. might need that so set that aside for a minute and here is our front and back covers of course it doesn't matter which is front and which is back but I am going to mark I'm going to put an F and a B to mark which is up and which is down so that if I can read the F then I won't be turning it this way because it's going to be a little bit taller than it is wide I'm going to take some of the wrapping paper and you can glue. I probably will just for simplicity's sake here. Where did I put the lid? The lid, the lid, the lid, the lid, the lid. Oh, here it is. And I'm not going to use like a ton, ton, ton of glue just to make sure it's covered, but not, you don't want it drippy or soppy, pooled up or anything like that. Pop that right there. If you don't have wrapping paper, you could always use like craft paper, like a, if you have a roll of craft paper. And you could even have the kids decorate it. They could stamp on it first or finger paint something, something fun. I'm going to cut the corners off just to the corner, but I'm going to leave about a hair line width so that it's not touching the corner exactly, but there's a little bit left there. Take some of that glue and turn all these edges over. I like to glue and turn over the opposing sides and then turn and do the other two sides. Okay, now check out the glue on the spine. Doing pretty well, pretty well. Let's see how wide this is. We've got 14 millimeters. I'm going to take this little strip that I have left over. There we go, that matches. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a scrap piece of fabric. It is just shorter than the page height, so just shorter but it's about three times the width. Put a little bit more glue in here. And I will glue the spine up again. I will center this pretty much. Go. This will serve as support 
for the spine and so that we can hinge it onto the book covers. So there is that. Glue everywhere. Now for the covers. And I realize they're all whoopity warpity, but that should be fixed here as soon as we finish. I'm going to take this piece of book cloth that is five by two, so it's just taller, and we've got two inches, so it should be plenty wide to fit around the spine. I'm going to line it up here on my grid lines so that I can mark the center. And I'll mark the center on my little strip too. I will connect these lines just lightly so that I can see that in the middle. And I'm going to glue this onto that piece of cloth. And you don't have to use book cloth, you can just use cloth cloth, a piece of denim or it could be some upholstery fabric or part of a pillowcase. <laughs> and I'm going to line that up on those center lines like that. And now I'm going to take my two front back, whatever they are, and they're going to get glued on as well. But I'm going to leave a quarter of an inch or six millimeters I have this little steel bar that I can use as a as a spacer. And I just want to make sure that I line it up with this piece. That is important. A piece of plastic so I can glue onto there. Put my little spacer bar. And of course you could always cut a strip of paper or strip of cardstock that's the right size and use that as a spacer. Take my glue. Very carefully add some glue to this book cloth, brushing out. I'm going to slide it this way just in case I got anything over there. I don't think I did, but and I'm going to line it up. So there's one, and then I will do the same thing on the side. Push that up against that spine piece there. Paint this side with glue. And pull that away. Take the other one and line it up just like the back. So there we go. Now we can fold these over. Fold this one over. All right, look at us go. Now we've got our text block. And I'm going to center this text block inside and make sure that there is an even amount of overhang on both sides or close enough to it, right? I kind of have to fiddle with it and get it to be sitting in there correctly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the little fabric piece down. Here's a little piece of transparency film or acetate. Put a little bit of glue on the fabric all the way to where it folds around back of that spine. I'm just going to fold that over and down. my bone folder and run it down in that little gap there. Now I can open this up and take that out for just a minute. Put a clean piece in there. And then I flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing on the side. Put that 
underneath there so it doesn't get on the paper. Brush that glue on. And you probably notice we're not putting glue on the back of the spine, just on the sides of this piece of fabric. And I'm going to push that in and fold that over. My bone folder along that spine area there. Take out these two pieces since they have glue on them and put this one in. Because the next thing we're going to do is take our little pieces that we cut out of the wrapping paper and it's going to get glued on the inside and we're going to start right here and I think that's been glued long enough. And I'm going to paint glue on the inside of the cover. And if you want to wait longer and really let it dry, go right ahead. Time's sake, I'm, I'm not waiting. All right. And I will glue down here in a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and line this up and stick it down to the inside of the cover. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue down to here but grab the chipboard I had left and I'm going to line it up against the edge, but I'm just going to leave a tiny little sliver, about a quarter of an inch, six millimeters, or a little less. I'm going to brush that glue inside on that fabric that holds our text block in, all the way down and onto that little strip paper. This is basically our first sheet of paper. And I'm going to put that glue all the way up to there. And I'll take this, fold that down, and down and around. And move my chipboard. And take my bone folder and just kind of fold that down. I'm going to take a piece of the acetate, put that back in there, and then flip it over. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side. It's important that you get your glue on evenly and that you don't leave any dry spots, but you don't want it to be uh, gooped up and pooled up in some areas more than others, if you can help it. I will put this on. I'm going to hold it up against these papers so that it's lined up with the text block. And now like I did on the other side, I will fold this back. Get my brush ready. A little piece of chipboard so that I can put glue just where I want it to be. Brush that in there. I can fold that back and down. Take 
take out the little piece of chipboard. Grab a piece of dry acetate, put that in there. Now it just needs to dry for a bit. So I'm going to put something kind of heavy on top of it. How about a brick? Is that heavy enough? Okay, we'll give that a little bit of time to dry and then I will show you what it looks like. Hopefully you enjoyed this beginner book binding technique and I hope it wasn't too intimidating and that you give it a shot. Feel free to use whatever kind of paper that you would like for the pages and also if you have different kinds of wrapping paper or craft paper, whatever you'd like to cover the covers. You can use thicker chipboard on the cover. What I used wasn't very thick at all. It was pretty flimsy stuff, but it worked out just fine. Feel free to use thicker stuff if you have it, if you want to. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today and making this little book. And I will catch you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.